All right, let's go back to the field to try to understand the chemistry of carbonates and their mineralogy. So we're in a very different part of Amman. We're no longer at Shorfet al-Alamin. This is Wadi Abiyad. And Wadi Abiyad is a famous location in Oman to see the semi ophiolite which are right behind the car there. You can see those brown rocks. So the ophiolite are actually part of the crust that was abducted onto the Omani continent, onto the Arabian plate in the late Cretaceous. So they are ultramafic rocks. They're basically made up of olivine. And obviously, they're not carbonates. So you might wonder, why are we here in ultramafic rocks in a carbonate course? Well, the answer to this lies in the interaction between CO2, water, and the rocks. So if you look more closely at those ultramafic rock, you will see fractures. And if you get close to the fracture, Inside is a white mineral. That white mineral is magnesite. And magnesite is a carbonate mineral. So this is actually a great location for us to try to understand the fundamental of the mineralogy and the chemistry of carbonate formation. Because the reason we have magnesite in the fracture is that we have water circulation and interaction between water and the ultramafic minerals. So now let's look at something we're more familiar with, or maybe that is more relevant for most carbonates, the ocean and the carbon cycle in the ocean. So on this slide, you're seeing the, uh, a picture from the atmospheric CO2 and the ocean. And the point is that atmospheric CO2 can be dissolved, can, can enter the ocean. So carbon dioxide is very important here. And what I want you to understand is that atmospheric carbon ends up in the marine water and can even be sequestered at depth into the ocean. So it's interesting because of the complex chemistry that carbon has with water. So if we look at the CO2 chemistry in the ocean, we start with CO2 dissolved in seawater. And of course, the other species that's common in, uh, in this medium is water itself. And CO2 and water can combine to form carbonic acid, H2CO3. Now, H2CO3, or carbonic acid, is not very stable, and it can dissociate at normal condition and lose a hydrogen. So carbonic acid loses a hydrogen, and you obtain a bicarbonate ion, HCO3 minus, plus a proton or a, a, a hydrogen. Now that species can also react with, um, can also uh, further react and give rise to essentially carbonate ion, CO3 two minus with two hydrogen. And this is it. This is the origin of the carbonate ion. So it's really fundamental to understand that all the rocks we're going to be talking about essentially come from ultimately atmospheric CO2. And this atmospheric CO2 itself comes from volcanic eruption and lately, of course, burning of fossil fuels. So that's a very important chemistry to understand. So in terms of pH, if you look at the, uh, the, the chemistry of, of uh, carbon in the ocean, we have a relatively complex situation. So on this plot, I'm showing you pH on the horizontal axis. And on the vertical axis, it's the relative proportion of the three species we've mentioned. So that's carbonic acid, bicarbonate ion, and carbonate ion. You can see that there are lines that separate these three species. So there are, there are demarcation, separation between the, the different um, ions here. Now, if you look at the situation in the ocean where the pH is typically maintained at 7.5, 
we are in what is known a buffered state. And we can look at the main species that dominate the oceans today. Largely, more than 75% of what you find in the ocean is bicarbonate iron. That's the biggest reservoir of carbon in the ocean today. It's followed by carbonate, maybe 20% of the carbon is in, in carbonate iron. That carbonate iron is readily available for chemical and biological processes that will lead to carbonate mineral precipitations. And we have a very, very, very tiny bit of carbonic acid. So carbonic acid is not a main component of the ocean today. So there is a process known as buffering of pH in the ocean that would tend to put the equilibrium back to largely bicarbonate iron with a little bit of carbonate um, iron. But what if you're in a body of water that has a very different pH to the ocean pH? What if it's hyperalkali, for instance, so high pH? If you go to high pH, you can see that the proportion of iron is completely different. Then we have a very large proportion of carbonate ions that are freely available in that alkali water. Notice that the pH here that I'm selecting is very high, pH 9 and above. Most creatures cannot survive in, in a pH of, of um, that level. And we have also some bicarbonate ion. We literally have zero carbonic acid because this, this is carbonic acid is associated with low pH. So what happened? Do we have example of hyperalkali lakes or bodies of waters? Well, we do. Here's a beautiful example from Mono Lake in California. And you can see on this picture that we have these chimneys of carbonate. This is because the concentration of carbonate ion is such in the water that you will automatically precipitate carbonates. This is because the saturation, we can talk about saturation here of carbonate, the saturation of carbonate has reached the supersaturation threshold. So we will naturally precipitate those carbonates as a chemical precipitate. But what happened now if you are in low pH, so in more acidic conditions? So if you push the system so much that now the pH is below 6.5 or even below 6. What happens to the proportion of the different ion in the ocean? Well, we're left actually with a lot of carbonic acid with some bicarbonate ion, but no carbonate ion. And that means we cannot precipitate carbonates at low pH in acidic conditions. So what we learn from this is that ideal condition for carbonate precipitation are probably hyperalkali um, situation, just like behind us in the, uh, in the cliff, in the peridotite, that's the sort of, of condition that we have there, very high pH, so we can create chemical carbonates. But for life to be sustained and to produce large volume of biogenic carbonates, we need to be in this buffered state of the ocean.